Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Pagani Design PD1692 V2. This watch is available from Pagani Design All Factory Store on AliExpress for €112. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch comes in this Pagani Design watch box. The watch sits on a piece of foam inside a foam cutout panel in the base as one would expect. Although basic, it does suffice in protecting the watch in shipping from any damage, and I think it's perfectly acceptable to use a basic cardboard watch box, bearing in mind this is a low tier price point piece at only €112. Euro. With regards to the items one gets for the watch, this is a plastic guarantee card, and as usual the reverse isn't filled in. However, I'm pleased to report the watch is covered by the usual 12 month international guarantee. This is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams, the instructions are in English and it details the operation of the movement used which is the Seiko NH35A automatic. One also gets this Zulu strap and as you can see, stainless steel hardware which is PVD coated to a good standard in black. The two keepers are fixed into position, stitched to either side. Nice heavy thickness to the fabric which feels like ballistic nylon and we have plenty of holes in the strap. The holes are welded to prevent them fraying with regular use and good attention to detail because the end of the nylon is also welded to prevent it fraying. So good quality strap and a credible alternative to the Oyster style bracelet that comes fitted to the head of the piece. One also gets this plastic tag and lastly one also gets this Pagani Design branded microfiber polishing cloth. I always think it's a nice touch to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth irrespective of the price point of a piece. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Pagani Design PD1692 V2. I have previously reviewed the V1 version and the difference between the V1 and the V2 is the V1 had PT time text on the dial at 6 o'clock and it was the one thing I disliked about the V1. So I'm pleased to report that Pagani Design responded to feedback and criticism from collectors saying they would prefer a cleaner dial with the PT time deleted and they quickly updated to this V2 version and deleted it. And really PT time doesn't make any sense, it doesn't stand for anything, but they also print UGS on their watches such as the PD1733 which is the Milgau Samage and that does make sense because UGS stands for Upgrade Grand Series. But PT time really has no meaning and it's nonsense to have that printed on the dial, it just clutters it and makes it too busy. So this V2 is a better version. Now with regards to the dimensions of the piece, this is clearly an homage to the Rolex Explorer, a watch I've previously reviewed. So it has very similar proportions to the Explorer. We have a 40mm case diameter. We have a 49mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 11.7mm and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster style bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to 16mm at the flip lock clasp. The flip lock clasp is signed to a good standard, beautiful lustre to the brass satin finish to the top side which contrasts with the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks. No sharp edges, no burrs and we don't have sharp points on the corners so this is very well finished. I'll show you the interior. Solid milled 316L grade stainless steel, mats be blasted to the centre section and that contrasts with the flawless mirror polishing to the top side, underside and flanks. So the interior is well finished. And we also have a 5mm Easelink style extension, as you can see, which allows for 5mm of on-the-fly adjustment. Now, I'm going to be critical of this. Usually these Easelink style extensions deploy very easily without any force, and actually sometimes they're quite loose. But on this one, it's very tight. One has to really push it in to get it to snap into the body. And when deploying it, one has to really push it hard. It really takes a lot of force to deploy it. Now, I'd rather have it to be too tight than too loose, but however, there is room for improvement to get the tolerances better because it's not pleasant to use because one really has to push it in hard with the thumb and it snaps in with a nice positive click, but it's actually painful because one has to press the thumb against it so hard to get it to click in. Same applies when deploying it. One has to really push it very hard with the thumb and it's painful to actually get it to deploy, but it does work to a satisfactory standard. Now there is a negative to these Pagani Design flip lock clasps, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. There is three micro adjustment dimples either side of the body, but they've only put one slot for the spring bar at the top. There isn't a second slot in the lower portion. So the problem is when one depresses the spring bar with a spring bar tool, it's difficult to slide the interior, the 
internals of the micro adjustment to move it along the three dimples. They should have just used a conventional spring bar with two slots and therefore it'd be easy to press in the two ends. So there is room for improvement on the design and I would like to see them upgrade to using a glide lock style clasp even if that means increasing the retail price of the piece. But having said that the micro adjustment does work. I've moved it to position two and also, as you can see, the EaseLink style extension does also work. It snaps shut with a nice positive click, and the flip lock also snaps shut with a nice positive click. So other than that, the clasp is acceptable. With regards to the bracelet, there is room for improvement. 1.6mm screw pins is good, rather than using the cross-cutting measure of push pins. The end links are a good tight fit to the case. Beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel. And the mirror polishing to the flanks is also done to a high standard. But as you can see, we do have some play in the links in the screw pins. Up and down play, lateral side to side play and longitudinal play. So this isn't one of the better Pagani design bracelets I've seen. I've actually seen better quality bracelets on the 1692s, the 1733 and also uh, I think the 1661 has a better quality bracelet because as you can see on this 1692 there is a lot of play and therefore it rattles but having said that there's no sharp edges no burrs to the flanks and the bracelet does look very well finished the luster is good and also the mirror polishing is good but it just does have a lot of play so they need to tighten up the tolerances the male end links are a good tight fit to the head of the piece so they are correct with regards to the rest of the specification we have a flat sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside and it's an enhancement that I was really pleased to see Pagani Design introduce with the 1692 Explorer Marges and the 1733, which is the Milgauss homage using the same case. They introduced AR coating and the clear AR coating does do a good job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver applied indices, silver applied Arabic numerals and the silver mirror polished Mercedes handset. The proportions of the Mercedes hands are correct. The minute hand is long enough, it nearly extends to the minute ticks on the chapter ring. The minute hand, the, the second hand, sorry, does extend all the way to the minute ticks, and also the hour hand is correctly proportioned because it nearly extends to the applied indices and the Arabic numeral. So, good proportion handset, and I like the applied indices, and the font of the Arabic numerals is correct, 9, 6, and 3, because this is an homage to the Rolex Explorer, and the font of the Arabic numerals is very similar to the Explorer. I like the fact that Dahl isn't over branded with a necessary text or specification, and they've made the correct decision by deleting Pagani Design logo text at six at 12 o'clock and just using the silver applied shield because it's very aesthetically pleasing and the applied shield balances the 9, 6 and 3 Arabic numerals. So on the dial we just have automatic 20 bar slash 200 meters just the right amount of information and it really does look cleaner without the PT time as per the V1. So good dial layout, symmetry is good as per the Explorer, legibility is good and the clear AR coating works very well. I like the, sh the edge of the crystal because it has a nice bevel and that catches the light when one tilts the piece at an oblique angle. Nice projection of the bevel of the crystal above the mirror polished bezel. So the bezel is solid 316L grade stainless steel, flawless mirror polishing, finished a very high standard and that complements the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks to the case. Nice curved undercut, no sharp edges, no sharp points to the tips of the lugs. Brush satin finish tops of the lugs which contrasts with the mirror polished flanks and there's a nice crisp edge to the flanks of the case. So the quality of the finishing to the head of the piece is outstanding. I'll show you the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel case back which provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 metres. Now minor criticism is the use of a ridiculous design. As usual they've engraved a design of a mountain and it really is unnecessary. They should just engrave, engrave or emboss the Pagani Design shield as per other models. I think the shield looks better with Pagani Design in the centre section, but however, this is subjective. Some collectors actually like these unique designs. I think on the 1692 uh, Explorer and Air King homages and also the 1733 Milgauss homage, they all use the same case. They should use the same case back with the Pagani Design shield in the centre rather than using this mountain design and I think it just could be improved upon. But having said that, it is finished to a good standard. The engraving is high quality, the embossing is good, and the CNC lathe tool machined finishing to the circumference is very good. Mirror polishing is good around the circumference with milled slots, no sharp edges, no burrs. It's a good low profile case back, bearing in mind it provides 200 meters of water resistance, and it is finished to a high standard. 
The solid end links are a good tight fit to the case and are well finished on the underside with no sharp edges, no burrs. And the underside to the case is also well finished with a brass satin finish. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I have sized the bracelet because it was slightly loose. I like to wear my bracelets loose as you'll know from my previous review so that I can always fit an index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp. But it was too loose even with an index finger so I've moved it from position 3 to position 2 on the micro adjustment which is quite fiddly but it now gets the correct fit. Now with regards to the proportions they are excellent. 40mm head of the piece works very well with a 49mm lug to lug measurement. To get this per perfect they could have reduced it to 48 which is the sweet spot. They could have made it 1mm shorter but 49 is good on the lug to lug but clearly it's meant to fit collectors with a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches. Really 48mm is better suited for collectors with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches respectively. My favourite aspect of the dimensions is the thickness. This is incredibly low profile for an NH35A powered piece. It's only 11.7mm. Usually with an NH35A powered piece one would expect it to be circa 13mm and if it's below 13 that is very good but using a flat sapphire crystal rather than a double domed top hat style crystal they have been able to reduce this to only 117 and they deserve credit because usually at 117 one would only expect this to be 100m water resistance because it needs a thinner case back and also a thinner crystal to get down to 117 but they have retained. 200 meters of water resistance but it's still only 11.7 and the flat sapphire crystal is very aesthetically pleasing and the low profile screw down case back is very good because it means the head of the piece is very snug to the wrist we don't have a large gap underneath the curved undercut of the lugs so very snug fit the taper of the bracelet is correct 20 down to 16 is perfection personified it's the perfect taper for an oyster style bracelet now in terms of comfort this is 10 out of 10 142 grams for 40 mm head of the piece on a solid oyster style bracelet is very well balanced. The 20 mm lug width perfectly balances the 40 mm head of the piece. Anything under circa 150 grams is the sweet spot for comfort. It does give you a feeling of heft and wrist presence, it does give you a feeling of quality, but 142 means that it doesn't feel top heavy it doesn't feel uncomfortable to wear for 8 to 12 hours per day. So this is an ideal daily wear piece low profile at 11.7 and also comfortable at only 142 so I really like the feeling of it they've got the balance correct and the tape on the bracelet really does feel very good too right so let's test the crown solid 316L grade stainless steel crown coin edge finished mirror polished and as you can see it's embossed with the Pagani design emblem to a high standard coin edge finishing is machined to a very good standard let's test the action absolutely silky smooth this is 10 out of 10 very smooth interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So in the first position one can manually wind the NH35A automatic to top it up to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up so it's very smooth. Absolute pleasure to manually wind. I would prefer if they'd use the 38 because that would delete the extra click position on the winding stem. But however, this is subjective. Some collectors like the 35A because it opens up possibilities for modding the watch because the date wheel is present beneath the dial. So for example, if you wanted to change the dial on this piece and use the date complication, the date wheel is present. With the 38, of course, the date complication is deleted. But I think for a no date piece, really, the 38 would be better than the 35A. Pulling it out to the first click position is the date setting position and one can feel the date wheel is still present. The date complication clicks over on the quick set. One can feel the clicks with a nice positive click. So it's a shame they didn't use the 38 to delete that extra click. Pulling us out to the second click position is the final click, which is the time setting position. And if you look at the second hand, you can see I've now stopped it dead. It's possible to hack the movements to set the time precisely to the second. The 35A has nice light resistance to it. And one thing I like about it versus the Miyota 8215 is that there is no back play. There's an immediate pick up there's an immediate interface when one, when one rotates the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise the hands move immediately the minute hand moves now with the 8215 there's some back play clockwise and anti-clockwise there is a bit of play rotating the crown but it's tighter on the 35a 
and I like the fact there's no back play. So light resistance, it does feel smooth, absolute pleasure to set the time. It's a good, reliable, well-proven workhorse movement. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. The second hand begins to sweep around the dial once again. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup. This is one of the best Pagano Design crowns I've experienced. It really is like the very best of the 1661 and 1662 screw down crowns. They are silky smooth. I was very impressed with the V1 uh, 1692 and also the 1733, which is the Milgau Samage. They had silky smooth crowns. This one is excellent. It's one of the best I've experienced. It's something that consistently Pagano Design get correct. Their screw down crowns do perform very well, they do feel smooth and they don't feel gritty and I really like that aspect of this piece. Right so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right so that's now fully charged and as you can see it is disappointing. There's a slight colour mismatch. If you look at the blue Mercedes hands you can see they are slightly brighter than the Arabic numerals, the 9, 6 and 3. And really, this is what two to three layers of Luminova looks like. They clearly haven't used BGW9, nor have they used C3 Superluminova. And as always, I'm going to be critical of this because at €112, Euro, they could upgrade, even if it means increasing the wholesale price or the retail price by €5 to €10 Euro per piece. Collectors would happily pay an additional €5 to €10 Euro if this used BGW9 or alternatively C3 Superluminova because it would be very good, a, worth, a worthwhile enhancement. This really is two to three layers on the Arabic numerals and the applied indices rather than five to six layers. So it's, there is a cost cutting measure. And the Mercedes hands clearly have more layers, more like five to six, because as you can see on the Mercedes hands, the blue loom is glowing brighter than on the applied indices and the Arabic numerals. So they've used the same tone of blue luminova, but however, they've clearly applied more to the Mercedes hands than on the applied indices and the Arabic numerals. So it's okay performance at €112, Euro, but really it's nothing like as good as BGW9 and I would really like to see them upgrade to that because they have upgraded to using AR coating, which is a good enhancement. And really it's the last thing they need to get right, they need to improve upon is the quality of the loom they're using. So it's fading and it will continue to fade to nothing quickly. Um, I think it's okay, but I really would prefer BGW9. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. You'll all be familiar with the Seiko NH35A Automatic. It's a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement made in Malaysia. It has 24 joules and it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 Hz. 40 hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable. It has hand winding and hacking which is for complications. The stated accuracy of the 35A is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. So a rather wide accuracy range. But however this one has been well regulated and it's running consistently at plus 10 seconds per day. So plus 10 is well within the minus 20 to plus 40 stated accuracy and plus 10 is acceptable for a 35A. Now, with regards to the movement, as I've discussed, I would prefer if they changed to using the 38 rather than 35A because that would delete the phantom date setting position. But however, the 35A is a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement and the correct choice for this piece. And I think at this price point, €112, Euro, I'm pleased to see them use the 35A rather than using the 8215, which would be a cost-cutting measure. I prefer the 35A to the 8215 because the, the rotor on the 35A is quieter and therefore it's more pleasant because it doesn't make a noise on wrist. So with regards to summarising the piece, I'm going to declare this a champagne watch for lemonade money. It's excellent quality and excellent value. I like this watch so much I have decided to add it to my own personal collection which is the highest compliment I can pay a watch. As you'll know from my previous State of the Collection reviews, I previously owned uh, in my collection the 1692 Air King homage, and I really liked that piece because it also had AR coating. But when I saw this V2 was released and deleting the PT time from the dial, which was the one thing I disliked about the V1, I decided to sell my 1692 Air King homage and upgrade it or, or succeed it with this, the 1692 Explorer homage. I think this is a better looking piece and I really like it. I like the AR coating and the symmetry of the dial. So despite the shortcomings such as the play in the links and also the difficulty in adjusting the micro adjustment and the fact the EasyLink style extension is difficult to deploy and snap back in, I do still really like the watch. At €112, Euro, I think this is an outstanding daily wear piece, so I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Pagani Design PD1692 V2. 
Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.